welcome to this week's edition of the Dakota Angler 2-Minute Fishing Report. Well, the weather definitely turned more wintry uh, this past week, and that has really minimized the number of people that have been able to go out open water fishing because guess what? A lot of the smaller sloughs and even some of the smaller lakes have been locked up this past week, uh, and some people have even ventured out on Saturday and Sunday on some of these smaller sloughs and even some of these smaller lakes. And I'm not going to say... You know, what thicknesses that they were reporting because everyone has this, you know, habit of exaggerating thicknesses a little bit. Whether or not you go out or not, it's really the main key is being safe and also deciding what your risk tolerance is. Is it really worth going out there this time of year right now for a fish? And at this point in time, I would say the thickness is variable. But the good thing is, even though that we're going to warm up during the, you know, uh, upcoming week, during the day, the overnight lows are going to be cold enough that we're going to actually preserve, maybe even make a little bit more ice than what we already have out there. It's really going to be dependent on the amount of wind that we see this upcoming 7 to 10 days. So, again, we're there. We're not quite there where I think a lot of people are safe enough. But, a few, again, a few people did venture out, uh, but I have not gotten any reports back from those people at all, which, you know, again, can be good or bad, if you know what I mean. Uh, as far as open water, a lot of people you know, that have ventured out have gone to the river. That's really the only place that uh, people are really uh, taking their boats out, and that's been hit or miss depending on the wind and the weather. Uh, but uh, no, as far as I know, nothing real big as far as walleyes are concerned, and I have to you know, take that with a grain of salt. You know, 8 to 10 to 12-pound walleyes are still big in my books, but compared to what they have been catching out there, it's uh, a little bit smaller than what they're used to. But again... Reapers have been the bait of choice out there, uh, hands down. And we have plenty of them on hand here. And again, if you can't stop by at the store, make sure you order them online at DakotaAngler.com. In this week's edition of Todd's Tackle Tips, we're going to talk about early ice and some of the things that you need to keep in mind for this time of year. Obviously, the first thing that you need to keep in mind is your safety. And one of the things that are going to threaten your safety the most is the ice thickness itself. So you got to figure out how thick the ice is. And some of the best things that have come out to, in recent years to help you with that has been with these uh, light flights and the light flightings uh, that will attach to a cordless drill that you can use as you're walking out to test the thickness of the ice. Whether or not you're talking about a Strike Master light flight or an Eskimo pistol bit or a K-drill or even a Jiffy torch, they all do the same thing in different form or fashion. But again, the nice thing about it is that it, it decreases the amount of weight that you would be carrying out there with a regular auger. So Again, it enhances your safety, but also can use as a tool to help you test the thickness of the ice. One of the other ways that you can use the things to use to test the thickness of the ice is a spud bar, an old-fashioned you know, spud bar that you use to chip away at the ice out ahead of you as you're walking. So again, those are some of the things that you need to remember, especially this time of year, in testing that ice thickness, and really, I should say, throughout the entire year. Something else that you should have around you at all times is ice picks, the safety picks in case if you do fall in, you have something to grab a hold of the ice to pull yourself back up. The other thing, honestly, you can, it's becoming more standard than anything else, is an ice suit, a flotation suit. Whether or not you're talking if one from any of the companies that offer it, we carry all of them here at Dakota Angler. But the main thing is to have a flotation suit just in case you need it. It's just like I always tell people, you don't drive anymore without a seat belt. You put it on naturally, and that's what that ice suit should be for you as well. Just something to keep you safe. If you don't want to wear a nice suit, at least have a life jacket around you, a life vest, to, again, to keep you afloat, to get you out of there in case, you know, someone's nearby. And that's the other thing to have is, again, a rope, a throw rope of some sort. Uh, and also, don't go out by yourself. A lot of times people will go out venturing by themselves, and they can't, and they get in trouble, and then they don't have anyone to help them. Again, these are all things that, you really don't want to think about because you don't want to think about the reality or the possibility of that happening. But again, it's better to be prepared than sorry. So again, if you have any questions about any of this stuff that we talked about or need any of these uh, light flights or any of the, the suits that we talked about, stop on by here at the store or feel free to give us a call at 605-336-9132. Now it's time to take a look at a few photos that you sent in to me this past week. And honestly, folks, there's not many, only one and it's West River. And remember, folks, if you'd like your photo included in next week's version of the 2-Minute Fishing Report, all you have to do is send it to me, 
send it to Todd at TheClintAngler.com, or post it to our Facebook wall. And remember, folks, there's no harm in bragging. And before we end this week's report, I want to remind you of a thing and also emphasize a point that you've heard me say it many times before, that we are your fishing headquarters. And I can honestly say that we are definitely your ice fishing headquarters because you're not going to find anyone else that has the amount of tackle and ice fishing equipment that we have here at Dakota Angler at 1120 East Benson Road. If you don't believe me and you haven't seen it yet this year, make sure you stop on by the next time you're in Sioux Falls and you will be amazed at the selection that you have in one location right here in Sioux Falls. So again, check us out. If you can't be here at the store, check us out on the web at dakotaangler.com. Well, folks, that's this week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report. For Dakota Angler, I'm the owner of Todd Hike Camp, and as we say around here, Fish on! We'll see you next week. And again, thanks for watching. Stay healthy. And folks, as always, stay safe.